Well, the time has finally come to stop procrastinating, which I like to do, and get this clutch changed out in the Corvette. Even though the clutch only has like 30,000 miles on it, it um, is slipping pretty bad now. So we're going to put a monster twin disc into this car and um, been kind of torn on how much of that I'm gonna show. I think I'll try and show most of it, but uh, you know, don't get disappointed if I miss a few things here and there. So the first thing we gotta do is at least get the rear tires knocked off of it. I may take the fronts off of it just so there's a little bit more room to crawl on, crawl around easily underneath the car, especially since we're using quick jacks, which takes up some of your uh, ability to get easily out from underneath or underneath the car all right so the things that i know that are a given are the calipers got to come off both sides of course everything's going to be if i say something in the back it's going to be both sides um caliper upper control arm uh bolts front one and a rear one upper shock mount's got to come loose and the sway bar's got to come loose um the for now i got to get the mid pipe out and the tunnel plate removed and then i think i've heard a few people say that the Mufflers need to come out as well. I'm not quite sure why that is because they go up and over the cradle, but Either way, I'm gonna take the mufflers out anyways because I got a surprise coming um, So that'll be kind of exciting, but anyways, let me get some of this hardware loosened up and then maybe we'll go over the uh, size tools that it took to get it apart Okay, I think I've got an assortment of tools to get this star uh, job started So 21 millimeter to get the brake caliper off and out of the way. Got a wee bit of an extension and universal mess to get the shock, upper shock mount loose. Anytime you're using chrome sockets on an impact, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. bolt so our shock mounts loose calipers off Okay, now this one, we gotta make sure we don't trap it. That was fast, holy shit. wire before he gets pulled too tight. One of the other things that I got to remember how to do is 
unhooking the uh, parking brake cable. I've had it apart before, so I'll figure it out again. I think next I'm going to take the uh, sway bar link loose and pop the sway bar off. get the other side off and we'll take the sway bar off all the way off there's one nut and one bolt each side of the car 19 millimeter was the size of the nuts on my replacement end links and of course these are a different size feels like 18s So to take the parking brake cable off, as long as the parking brake is not on, you can literally just take a pair of pliers to this guy right here and uh, pop it off of the lever. It comes right off. And then it's two 15 millimeter bolts that hold the bracket and you can take that off. I was going to try and unclip it from the bracket and just take the cable out, but I said screw it and just took the bolts out. So. All right, the radio's back on, so I'm gonna go over to the other side and disassemble the driver's side, same as we did the passenger side. And then I think we'll move on to the exhaust. All right, we've got the rear suspension is unhooked, both sides. Brakes are disassembled, calipers are off, park and brake cables are totally free. Now we're gonna take out the mid pipe and the tunnel plate. Probably wind up getting a fresh pair of gaskets for these. Gotta go up front, take the V-bands loose, and let's see, we gotta take our curly cues loose here. Mid pipe is supported by spring hangers. are out. I don't know if y'all need to see me take a pair of V-bands apart but they're up there at the header collectors and then I also got to unhook my wideband uh, O2 sensor and the mid pipe will be free. So we get the mid pipe out. I zipped out almost all the bolts from the tunnel plate. Got two more tunnel plate bolts hopefully this is pretty light this is an aftermarket tunnel plate I don't know if it's honeycomb or solid aluminum but we're getting ready to find out <laughs> it's got rocks on top of it I don't know what that's fully made out of. If it's solid aluminum, it's fairly light.
those of you that are unfamiliar, that is a torque tube. It's not a drive shaft, it's a torque tube. And that is the transmission. The transmission is in the back of the car. Some people call it a transaxle. I don't really believe that it's a transaxle because it is, it's a transmission with a differential bolted to it. A lot of transaxles have the axles coming out in the middle part of the transmission. That's not how it works on these, but anyways, potato, potato. Let's get this junk out of here. And then I think I'm gonna try and get the mufflers off and Unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to take off at least one header, if not both headers. So that kind of blows, but so away she goes in Corvette world. As my buddy Chuck likes to say all the time, Corvettes working, working on Corvettes is a lot like working on a ship in a bottle. my homemade x-pipe homemade mid pipe my wide band gauge everything's coming apart nicely this is a low miles car so a lot of the hardware is in great shape and nothing's stuck You've got mail. we got the mufflers out without taking them apart as many of you know, on C5 Corvettes, it's very difficult to get the mufflers out in one piece. It takes a lot of jockeying things around. Um, it's, you can't really see it from here, but the only way that we were able to get those mufflers taken out of this car in one piece was I had to pop the axle stubs out of the differential and pull the stubs out of the way. The axles have to be popped out anyways to move the brake lines around, so it ended up working out just fine. I think I'm going to call it quits for today. I need to do a little research, and since this is an early C5, I need to figure out what I need to do with the EBCM. Since it's mounted in the rear of the car, which has its pluses and minuses, of course, um... I need to figure out what I need if I need to hang it from the bottom of the car or if it comes down with the cradle I'm just not sure I'm guessing it's got to hang from the bottom of the car with the brake lines so hopefully that doesn't have to get disassembled and bled because that would suck uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it so I ended up pulling the headers loose from the heads not a real fun experience but unfortunately you don't have a choice when you have headers there I have them literally hanging by one bolt the forwardmost bolt on each side into the head it's just kind of holding them up but after doing that that enabled me to get the clutch cover off yay I think I'm going to be able to work with the clutch with the headers hanging where they're at and get the flywheel in and out of there. So the clutch cover has uh, six 10 millimeter bolts uh, going vertically and then there's two horizontal bolts that have 13 millimeter heads and then there's five uh, 13 millimeter bolts uh, holding the torque tube to the bell housing these five bolts and these two bolts are the same so that's kind of nice um, I kind of I expose the quick disconnect the hydraulic quick disconnect coupling so I can get to that there's the cover the clutch cover might be able to see how I have the headers just kind of hanging in there. My next fun little chore. We get to take part of the interior part now. Got to take armrest part of the console out so we can get to the hardware for the back of the bezel. We got to take the whole uh, radio bezel out so that we can get to the shifter. 
I don't know if the shifter has to come all the way out, but uh, I know for sure the boot has to be disconnected from the tunnel. So that's what I'm going to work on next. Got to eat some lunch first, and then uh, maybe I'll go over some uh, quick pointers on where all the hardware is to get this bezel and stuff out of here. So there's a couple of covers at the back of this cubby. They're barely doing anything. They just kind of lay in there. They're not even broken and they're barely doing anything. Two 10 millimeter nuts. Don't leave tools on the seats, that's a bad idea. That's right. So we gotta take off the traction control panel. Glad I didn't yank too much harder on there. So there's two more tens. So this holds both the holds both the front and the back halves together. Pulling for three days and not gotten anywhere. Okay. We don't need to take that all the way out of the car. We just need to get it, the bezel loose. So now we've got the bezel loose. Sorry if it's kind of dark in here, but This cover's got to come off. This one's broken. It's held on with a piece of uh, dumb gum. Just super black sticky stuff. I have a new one. Ball of dumb gum. There's one torque screw right there. Can't remember what size it is. I'll let you know here in a second. If I remember right. Yes, behind the ashtray. Behind the ashtray is, um, I think, two more Torx bits. T15. Thank you. Whoa. It's hard getting in and out of here with the car up in the air. Sorry, y'all are a little bit crooked. Okay, so gotta carefully pry this. There's two tabs at the top of this bezel. And this one's extra tight. Come on. There we go. Ooh. Okay, if I 
remember right, the only thing we need to unhook is the cigarette lighter. Just got a real goofy connector on it. This is a vet, vet nuts bezel, by the way, if anybody's wondering what double din bezel that I'm using. I got in on one of the first ones. I never did do a video on installing the double din. But quick little synopsis. I made my own metal adjustable brackets. Um, these brackets are basically copies of the ones uh, there used to be a guy on eBay that uh, sold metal brackets for double dins. I don't think he does it anymore. So I basically made my own. Okay, now we gotta take this boot off. I don't even know what that connector's for. That must be, I wonder if it's for uh, active handling. The original owner of this car actually went to the trouble to put in a P-Touch label <laughs> for when the hearse shifter got thrown in. A lot of people dog on the hearse shifter. This one feels just fine to me. Might be magnet time. Or play a game of operation. Stuff's pretty loose. Pretty simple shifter. That is what is known as the shifter box should be able to stay just where it's at. I believe we are done inside. We can go back to working at the rear of the car. I've got to get that uh, EBCM taken loose and uh, disconnect a few more things and then we're ready to start dropping the cradle down. Well, we are moments away from lowering the cradle and the transmission diff and torque tube down this is how I since I have an early C5 this is how my EBCM is being supported is with a couple of motorcycle straps tie downs so it's gonna it and the brake lines are gonna stay behind so it's just kind of suspended by these straps and all the uh, steel brake lines up there I think I'm going to go ahead and take that little dingle ball weight off of the side of the diff. So this kind of hard to see. There's a brake line going down each side of the diff. That brake line's going to stay behind and it has to pass in between each axle stub and the differential on each side. Hopefully that hopefully that shows. So 
Again, I'm going to take that weight off so that brake line will pass through easier. And then we are down to the four nuts holding the cradle to the frame. And um, it's showtime. So we must be doing something because I, I already loosened up the four nuts on the cradle in the back. And we've already got a gap of about a quarter inch on the bell housing. So I went ahead, I didn't film it, but I got the quick disconnect loose. I bought the little sheet metal tool that Tick Performance sells that releases that quick disconnect up in there. You can see it's got a white plastic collar. It's kind of like a fuel pump or a fuel filter retaining clip. It, it op kind of operates the same way or the same way as uh, the fuel lines do up on the engine fuel rail. So needless to say, this thing's ready to come down. We just got to finish taking the two nuts off in the back at the cradle and get it supported by a jack. And then I think we're gonna have three people kind of stabilizing its way down onto three jack stands. And then we gotta get it shoved off to one side so that we can work on the clutch itself. Well, we're, we're part way down and we don't have any idea what we're doing, so we're just winging it. Uh, exactly. Now we need to, I think we're down to lowering it down to where we can get the wire harness off. Can have one person on the torque tube and then one person holding the control arm and one person running the floor jack and pulling back on this whole mess. I would take that jack stand, but that's right by your head. That one, put it like mid span on the torque tube. Somewhere in there. That way, once we do get it free, it's something that we can just set it on so that you don't have to sit there and hold it forever. Basically, all you're going to do is hold this thing so it's stable, even though it's already Which pretty thing? stable. The whole goddamn thing. This, this whole right shittery. This, yep. Okay. The whole rear suspension. But don't hold on to that thing. Hold on to the bottom one. Like down here. Here? Yep. All, gonna... all you want to do is see this piece right here. Yeah. Keep it level. Okay. In other words, you're I don't you don't need to be fighting it. All you're doing is keeping it from tipping. Oh. And that is it. Anything? Slowly. Boy, I can't wait to put this back in. from back here see how flat this is mm -hmm. your job is just to keep this from tipping okay. and that's it don't lift 
the pull. Say what now? Nothing the problem. It is. I can't get rid of it. The problem is that I can't I can't hold it all at the same time. It just sucks. I'd hold it if I can, but I can't do I can both. Hold it. I'm just obviously very concerned about my hand. Your hand's gonna be fine. Back, bud? Yep. Shut this out. Well, almost. Okay. Okay, right, yeah. watch your fingers. It's got to stay up there somehow. I mean, I may have to turn around and put my foot on it because all we're doing is ramming into it. Okay, right there, we're good. Turn on back, bud. Yeah. It's like we're running into something. The shaft is out. <laughs> this thing ain't no aluminum drive shaft. Jack stand? Yes, you yeah, know. Yes. Okay. Okay. I need you to. I don't know where that useless piece of shit there is cell flashlight is at. <sighs> hey, you're going to need it. Oh. <laughs> I need you to go down the side of that torque tube and unclip the wiring harness. You alright? You get dirt in your eye? That's pretty good. You should be wearing safety glasses. You should be. Just watch that input shaft and let me know if it's going to hit anything as it tips up. We good? Yeah. This might not be the best way to, to work with this uh, ABS pump on an early C5, but I was able to tweak the lines enough to get it shoved off to one side without unhooking the lines and without kinking any lines. Eating dirt. And Isaac doesn't have safety glasses on and he's eating dirt. Okay, we're coming down some more, bud. Actually, if you want to, bud, why don't you go ahead and if you can, lift up on the torque tube and take half of that jack stand out of it so that it can go down if it's not too heavy. There you go. OK, 
Okay. Nice. Okay, we're coming down a little bit more. Yep. Make sure nothing's snagging. Make sure nothing's on top of the transmission still. Been ripped out by its roots. I don't think so. Torque tubes in there. Okay. All right, I think we're gonna come most of the way down. I'm gonna move the jack stand all the way down? If you could. I think that'd be perfect. Okay. Okay, coming down. Yeah. Just watch your foot. I'm on the jack stand. Okay, jack's yeah. bottomed out. We have succeeded. This ain't no aluminum drive shaft. <laughs> it's an aluminum torque tube. <laughs> so what I think we're going to do, bud, is we're going to shove the torque tube one side or the other. Whatever you think is easier. But you're going to have to scooch the uh, uh, jack stand at the same time. So if you want to climb around the front of it and just pull, actually, you know what I can do is come up front and pull the jack stand with you. Here, I can lift it, and if you can maybe reach the jack stand yep. here. And yep. jack is bottomed out. Okay. As a matter of fact, that's probably what you need to do is get up, go grab the jack handle, pull it, and you're going to pivot it. So you're going to push the jack handle towards the wall. Okay. Does How that much? make sense? How much? Just don't, you're going to help us. Don't, okay. don't do more, don't do less. Okay. Keep going. Perfect. Okay, we're done for today. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> that is why it's a $1,500 plus job. And we're good for free. Not free. <laughs> free? Is there any money spent doing that right there? Your time is my All right, after a little five-day hiatus due to some health complications, if you will, uh, it's time to get back after taking this clutch out. So, I still have the plugs on the engine, but I got one of these flywheel turning tools, so hopefully we'll be able to roll the thing through fairly easily, even with the plugs still in. I really don't want to take them out unless we have to. So what I'm going to try and do is take out two opposing pressure plate bolts before I start sneaking them out. That looks like that's going to turn pretty easy.
I don't really care about this pressure plate, so if it comes out a little bit cockeyed. <coughs> 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 be interesting to see how hot this clutch has gotten. So reason why I'm changing so the reason why I'm changing this clutch with a measly 34,000 miles on it is it quite simply won't hold the power of this engine like you can't even pass anybody anymore it'll just start slipping the clutch so it was never designed to hold this much power so we're going to take the flywheel out and then we're going to try our hand at getting the pilot bearing out. So, this engine is bone dry. What does that even mean anyways? Put that down in the comments below. So this is a do not disturb any of this stuff. Okay, we are now ready to get prepared to rip this pilot bearing out by its roots. That should be fun. Whoa! Let's try this. Maybe that'll make it so you guys can actually see something. Hey, is that better? 